Hello there. First kill was 19 years old. You are obviously here against your will. They're going to be kept like an animal. Whether it's Jack the Ripper or Jeffrey Dahmer, serial killers are horrific monsters, spreading terror everywhere they go. It's not just the murders they commit, but also the amount of cruelty and hatred that goes into their crimes. Several of these killers even had their own secret locations to play their sick games in. Welcome back to Curiosity. And today we'll be taking you inside the most disturbing dungeons and torture chambers used by serial killers. Why does the West Murder House horrify people even today? What about the toy box used by David Parker Ray and his girlfriend? We'll be talking about all of these and more. Let's begin the discussion by revisiting the West Murder House. While Rosemary West grew up as a shy child, she was prone to sexual violence from an early age. When Rosemary was 12 years old, she raped her brother. She would also harass other village boys. Fred West met Rosemary when he was 27 and she was just 15. While Fred briefly went to prison, Rosemary was in the charge of his daughters from a previous marriage, Charmaine and Anne-Marie. As you can imagine, she did not take care of both children. Charmaine even went missing in 1971. Once Fred returned from prison, Rosemary started doing sex work in the house. The couple would lure young women, rape them, and then torture and kill them. Fred and Rosemary also had a number of children, three daughters and two sons. The children were subjected to whipping and beating. Fred even repeatedly raped his daughters, even getting Anne-Marie pregnant and giving her an STD. They continued these horrific activities until 1987. The couple even ended up killing their daughter Heather, which finally sparked an investigation against them. Not only did the police find the remains of Heather, they also found the body of Charmaine, who supposedly went missing years ago. Fred had buried her body beneath the kitchen window of the couple's home. Police also found the bodies of at least 10 other girls. Both Fred and Rosemary West were found guilty. Fred committed suicide in prison, while Rosemary was sentenced to life in 1995. The West Murder House has been deemed a house of horror by tourists. Fred didn't even spare his first wife, Catherine Costello, the mother of Charmaine and Anne-Marie. If the West Murder House has spooked you, wait until you hear about this next one. The New Orleans House of Torture was the stuff of nightmares. When rescuers reached the house of La Lorie's after a fire engulfed the building in 1834, they could never imagine the horrors they discovered inside. Dr. Leonard Louis Nicolas La Lorie and his wife Delphine moved into their new home in New Orleans in 1831. The couple came from a wealthy family. In the public eye, Delphine was a do-gooder and even freed a couple of her slaves. Privately, she tortured all her workers. Two of the slaves even chose to end their life by jumping off the roof rather than suffering more torture. This treatment earned Delphine the nickname Mad Madame. Rescuers entering the house after the fire saw a black cook chained to the stove. The cook said she started the fire on purpose so she could try and escape Delphine. As the rescuers went on further, they saw the attic had seven workers with spiked collars. They either had their eyes gouged or had broken bones. They were only kept alive so that Delphine could continue with her sadistic games. 
Other victims of her violence were subject to various experiments. One woman was made to break her bones and then had them reset to form the shape of a crab. Another woman was made to wrap herself with the intestines. As if that wasn't crazy enough, one of her slaves had a baby boy fathered by her husband. Not only did Delphine kill the child, she also applied the baby's blood as a moisturizer right in front of the baby's mother. Witnesses also reported seeing people with holes in their skull with wooden spoons beside them so that their brains can be stirred. Delphine ran away after the fire and was never to be found again. The house still stands to this day. I cannot imagine the pain and agony Delphine's slaves went through. It's even more infuriating to think she never got punished for her crimes. The basement sex dungeon will send shivers down your spine. Moy Travis lived in San Luis, Missouri, where he first started killing small animals as a teenager. As an adult, his crimes got worse. He bragged about torturing and killing 17 women and even filmed himself. Travis would bring sex workers back to his house and make them comfortable by smoking crack cocaine with them. He would then lock them up in his dungeon, where he would rape and abuse the victims while filming it. When the police got wind of this, they discovered just how horrific the abuse was. In fact, the police chief ordered all his detectives who saw the video to undergo compulsory counseling. When Maury killed his first victim, he stated it was his first kill on video, suggesting he was already planning a lot more. First kill was 19 years old. He was also arrogant enough to send a local reporter a map from a computer where the location of one of his victims' bodies was marked. The police traced the IP address and found Travis's home. In the basement, police found the blood of at least six of his victims. They also found plans that Travis had drawn up to expand the basement. While he was going to have two cells where he could chain the women and torture them even longer. While Travis was arrested, he committed suicide before he could be convicted. The homemade dungeon straight out of hell. In 2009, Li Hao brought a house in the Henan province of China. He dug up the basement and built a dungeon where he imprisoned six women. He then went on to rape them and put the videos up on the internet. Five of these six women were sex workers Hao hired. He didn't let them see daylight for around two years. The sixth woman was caught by Hao while she was selling birth control products. He would make all six women perform sexual acts and broadcast them to followers who paid him for the videos. Hao then forced them into sex work. When asked why he was doing such horrible things, considering he had a wife and a child, Hao said he was doing it to earn money. It wasn't just the rapes, though. Hao even made three of the six women kill two of their fellow prisoners. One of the women who died was strangled, while the other woman was beaten to death. Hao was finally caught in 2011 after one of his prisoners escaped the dungeon and found the police. He was executed in 2014. The dreadful toy box was used to inflict horrible torture. David Parker Ray and his girlfriend Cindy Handy were together responsible for torturing more than 50 women. They used all kinds of instruments such as whips, sex toys and electric shocks. It's believed that Ray began raping and murdering women in the 1950s and went on until he was caught in the late 90s. Ray lived in a trailer where he constructed a so-called toy box. This is what gave him the nickname Toy Box Killer. 
he would play an audio recording to his victims in which he would tell them exactly how they'd be tortured and that they couldn't do anything about it. Your wrists and ankles are chained and you're gagged because you're not going to like the way I do it. You're going to be kept here naked and chained down. I'm going to use you for a sex slave. Ray and Cindy recorded most of these tortures and rapes, with Ray even maintaining a diary detailing the activities. The trailer had a table in the center, similar to what you would see in a surgeon's operating room. There was a mirror on the ceiling so that his victims could see all the horrors he was doing to them while they were tied up. The walls had all his tools, ranging from whips to clamps and pulleys. It was not just Ray and Cindy. Their friends also took turns on the victims. The couple would drug the victims heavily so they couldn't recall where they were or what happened. The couple were helped by their daughter, Glenda, and a friend named Dennis Roy Yancey. Ray was finally caught when his final victim, Cynthia Vigil, was able to escape. She brought the police to the trailer where they found all the evidence they needed. Ray was convicted for his crimes and given a sentence of 224 years in prison, but died of a heart attack after just a year. It's funny that while serial killers are such detestable people, the world is still fascinated by them. Let's keep your curiosity going with a couple more videos, shall we? Here's what you need to know. Watch Jeffrey Dahmer, America's most brutal serial killer. You can also try our video on the woman who spent 24 years in her father's prison. Go ahead, click one. Or better yet, watch both and learn more about some of the most horrific crimes in history. Which of these dungeons spooked you the most? Let us know in the comments below.